about eight games into the season. Um, still trying to feel things out, especially in the bullpen. Um, kind of some of the roles and, and uh, some guys' jobs and stuff like that. So it's it's it's, it's you know, some new guys, a lot of new faces, and we knew that going in. And with that, it's going to come a lot of inconsistencies, which we've seen that already. Um, but as, as the season goes, we're starting getting some guys back from injury. Brian Walters uh, specifically. Um, you know, that's going to answer a lot of questions there in the bullpen. Um, and then we've had some guys that have been banged up that early in the season that weren't available yesterday. So. Um, you know, it's, it's a big question mark going into the season, and it still is. So I think offensively we've shown that we can score runs at times and, and uh, just having a consistent approach and staying with our approach, I think uh, we, we're going to be okay there. J.D., with the bullpen, it started off well for them. I guess it's kind of recently. What have you noticed as a collective group that's kind of been going wrong or not as well as you'd like? Um, you know, I think we're not walking, guys, which is a concern going in, coming into the season. We are throwing strikes. We have been giving up some hits. Last night we gave up eight two-strike hits, which is not you know conducive to success, right? You know, we got to put guys away when we put ourselves in a situation to put guys away. Um, you know, two-out walk definitely hurt us there in the eighth inning, um, as well as free passes to start off innings with hit by pitches and stuff like that. We, we were able to pitch around one of them, uh, but one of them did come back to, to score, and I think they took one of the leads late in the game. Um, but again, it's 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 normal with a young bullpen. Um, there's just gonna be some up and down, some inconsistency. We just gotta kind of live with them right now and then let them get comfortable with their roles. A lot of these guys have never pitched out of a bullpen. You know, they've been starters their whole lives. So just coming into a game without their normal routine, it's 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 probably tougher than anything else. Is getting used to pitching on sh short notice. You mentioned Brian. Um, I guess what's his status and what role do you see for him when he is at full strength and able to throw whatever he wants to throw? So Brian threw a, a simulated game last Saturday, threw one inning simulated game, was, was great, threw a bullpen yesterday on Wednesday, uh, this Saturday scheduled to throw a two inning simulated game, um, and then he'll be available next, you know, everything goes well, he'll be available on Wednesday night, um, then moving forward, he's, he's just another one of the guys, so uh, we're very excited about him, he's looked really good. Um, we were tempted to make him available this weekend, but I think in, in the big picture, big scheme of things, and in, in, in his best interest, our best interest for the season. Um, he's waiting a few more days and kind of staying on schedule is, is probably the best option we have. So he will not be available this weekend, um, but he'll be, he, will, he will be available next Wednesday. And obviously a 12-inning heartbreaker is not the ideal way to go into, you know, a three-game set with Florida. How do you guys kind of recuperate both, like, literally, physically, and just mentally from a game like that? Well, the, the point's always been, you know, it's it's one game at a time. And whatever happened yesterday, it's over. You know, learn from, learn from that game the good and the bad and move on to the next day, you know, not even the next game or next series. So I mean, it doesn't change. Who we're playing this weekend doesn't change what happened yesterday. We, right now, it's where we're at, we lost to Florida Gulf Coast on Wednesday night. And it's not that we lost to Florida Gulf Coast before playing Florida. It, it's the same message, same same approach we're taking to the day today. Just learn from yesterday's game and, and, and put into play what we need to do for this weekend. With, with the Gators, um, obviously they have an All-American back, a really good Alabama transfer, you know, a bunch of guys. Back, but they've also had some inconsistencies and some new faces that you know maybe haven't stepped up as much. You know, studying them, you know, do you see some opportunities for you guys, even though you've been up and down also? It's it's early in the season. I think I think you could go up and down the every roster in the country, and you guys are seeing inconsistencies. Just getting a feel for playing together um, with today's landscape in college baseball, so much movement in rosters. You know, it's it's. I think everyone's kind of going through the same thing. You know, um, so uh, we have an as long as we get to play the game, we always have an opportunity. You know, so it doesn't matter who you're playing or what, what they're going through. Um, again, a point of emphasis for us is we're playing against ourselves and compete against yourself and be the best version of you every every night. It doesn't matter who, who's in that other dugout. So we're not going to play harder because it it's Florida. We're going to take it easy because it's Long Island. It's it's every game is like the last game. And compete against yourself and be the best version of you every time out. J.D., before the season you talked about your staff being able to scout ahead. That was one of the things you said about uh, Have you been able to do that with Florida as your staff been? Working on it is, and, and as, as we move forward to the season, you're going to have more and more data that you can study and put together, right? Right now, it is kind of limited in the number of at-bats and number of games they played. I mean, they, they only played one game that opening weekend. Um, I guess they played two this this week. So as much as we can, we are moving ahead and have as much information as we can get. But as, as the season goes, you're going to have more information on your own guys as well as your opponents, and you can make you know put better numbers together and make better decisions. And Caglione is obviously a guy that stands out for them, you know, two-way player, power bat. What's the scouting report that you've seen on him? He's a great player. He's a great player. You got to make pitches, and and and, but that's no different than anybody else. Um, it, it's a lineup like any other, you know, big lineup in college baseball. It's it's one through nine. It's a, it's a long lineup. 
Um, you you got to make pitches, and you can't relax. You can't take a mental break. You can't take a physical break. You just, just every pitch, I guess, every pitch, the game is on the line, you know, and, and you never know. It's that run you go up in the first inning might cost you the game. It uh, doesn't matter what inning it is. Every run counts. Every inning counts. Every pitch counts. So um, they got eight other hitters in the lineup that we got to worry about, but, you know, he's a very good hitter, and, and they got a couple others in that lineup that, are, that we got to worry about. With your team having so many new, <clears throat> new pieces, young pieces uh, that are starters, would you rather have a series like this a little later in the season, or are you just fine with it, you know, this early? We don't get to choose when we play, guys. You know, as, like I said earlier, you know, Selection Sunday is not this Sunday. So this uh, this week is not determined. Is we're not winning a national championship, and we're not getting eliminated. Our season doesn't end this week, and so uh, it's, it's just another measuring stick as to where we're at. Um, look, Florida's been the measuring stick for the state of Florida for quite a few years now. So uh, we, we need to beat guys, teams like this, uh, to get to where we want to be. So. But by no means is, is this going to be the end of the season, good or bad. Um, just like every other series, man, learn from it, get better, improve on what you got to improve on, and, and keep building on the success that you have, whatever area that might be. How are you season. feeling about your starting pitching, and do you feel like we're going to see the same guys for the Florida series? Yeah, it'll be the same rotation. I feel really good about those guys. Um, they've done a good job. I think uh, Gage had a pretty good bounce back game from you know this from opening day to, to last week. Um, we match up well. You know, Rafe is such a, such a different look from the left side, and, and Eric's done a great job so far as a Sunday starter. So we feel good about our starting rotation. And, but the starting rotation, all it does is gives you a chance to win, right? The Bulls are going to end up winning and losing every game for you. So it's an important piece to the puzzle. So we've we got to really kind of solidify that and, and get guys into their roles and get comfortable with their roles and getting their job done on a consistent basis. Eight games in, what has it been like for you with the lineup? I know you touched on that before the season, a lot of options. Just just how would you evaluate how it's been? You've had a lot of guys. Well, we had a whole week where you know one of your top hitters wasn't there, so that was a different lineup that you you, you, know, you didn't plan for, right? You got a, a lot of different options in the lineup, so every every one of those does have Blake here in it. Um, so that one week he was out, it kind of it, it, it slowed down the process of some of the changes and some things that we're, we're looking to do moving forward. Um, but we I mean, saw yesterday. I think we were down to we used our last pitcher available last night. We, we considered pinch running our last catcher available there in the twelfth inning. Um, we felt that we didn't have to. It was two outs, and, and he was at, you know the, the guy we were going to pitch run for was at second base already, running on the crack of the bat. But had he been at first base for less than two outs, we probably would have pitched ran for him, and then we would have pretty much emptied the benches there. So, um, but we're still learning. We're still learning what what batting order works best. To where guys, you know, it's amazing how hitters change their approach because of where they're hitting in the lineup, um, and not because of who they are. Because they feel they got to do more, they're hitting you know clean up or sixth or second or whatever it might be. So. Um, like everything else, we're going to find a spot in the lineup where they feel comfortable and we're setting them up for success as best we can. Specifically a catcher and shortstop, you've rotated a couple guys in as starters. Uh, yeah. Is that kind of the plan or can you assess each position? Just because we've seen Jack a few times. Um, yeah, I mean, the, ca the catching position is a little different than shortstop. I think we have two catchers that are pretty close in, 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 in talent and, and what they can do on the field, one being left handed and one being right handed. We're probably going to continue to see some type of, some type of platooning there. Um, but shortstop, you know, Jimenez, as I've said from the beginning, has been is, is arguably our most talented infielder defensively. Um, it's a matter of time before he kind of takes over that role. So um, he's fortunate, very fortunate. He's, he's, he's got a guy like J.D. Urso playing with him every day at practice, and he's learning a lot from him, and J.D.'s a great teammate. Um, and, he's, and J.D.'s going to play a role as well as a player, but he's uh, the bigger picture, I think, uh, Jimenez be, is, is learning a lot from him. and. and is going to really benefit him a lot. You touched on Brian earlier, but uh, we haven't seen Julian for a while. Was he available? And then Chris Diaz, has he been available? So those guys have not been available. Chris Diaz has not been available. Julian has not been available. Vargas has not been available since his first uh, timeout. So I'm um, surprised I got that question so late. It's as good as Vargas pitched. But um, those guys were not available, I think. Um, and, neither, and neither was um, Dreyer at that point. So we had four guys down, um, really Sunday's game and, and yesterday's game. Um, so we were a little thin going in with the bullpen that not very experienced to start with. So, um, but I think Vargas will be okay for this weekend, and, and Julian is, is, is very probable he'll be okay. Um, the other guys, Diaz and, and Dwyer, probably not be available. So. And then heading-wise, Renzo and, and Reyes, uh, have they been available? So Renzo's not. Renzo had Tommy John surgery uh, two weeks ago, so he's out for the season. Um, and, and Reyes right now has not been medically cleared. See in the near future what happens with some tests that they're running. Daniel Cove has obviously uh, started with a really great season. Uh, just what has he done well for him to hit the ground running as a freshman? 
Obviously, he's talented. Uh, he's got talent that you can't teach. Um, but the most impressive thing about him is, is his willingness to learn. He loves to, to practice. He loves the process of getting better. He asks great questions. He's a, he's a student of the game. And, and all in all, it's, just, it's a great recipe for success for the ball player. That's that's got the God-given ability and then the ability to want to learn and get better every day. So. Um, I got no concerns with him. I, we knew he was going to be a great player. I think he's, we didn't expect this so soon, um, but I'm not surprised by it. Just, I was just curious how, how you can help him play through what he's going through. I got him in there, and I'm sure he wants to do well this week. Just what's that process as a coach to kind of go through this? I mean, look, hitting's not easy. When you take a week off, it makes it that much tougher, you know, and, and going through what he went through, it's emotionally, he came up with some big situations last night that, you know, he probably tried to do a little too much, but that's kind of human nature. Um, someone in, that's not in his situation would have done the same thing. So you you compound that with what he's gone through and wanting to come back and a chance to be the hero and a walk off. It's it's, it's tough. It's a tough place to be, especially for a 19 year old, you know. Um, but the only way to get back into back into it is by playing. So I can't say it was premature to throw him back in the lineup after one day of practice, but we got to get him ready for this weekend and next week and moving forward. So. Um, our best lineup has Blake in it, so we just got to get him ready to go. Anything else for JD? Coach, what is it that you're most looking forward to this weekend? You know, with Florida coming to town, big rivalry, not only in college baseball but in all of college athletics. I mean, I'm looking to how my team responds to it. Um, not again. The, the message is always play against yourself, compete against yourself. We don't try harder because of who you're playing, or try less because of who you're playing. And and. I guess the ability of, of slowing the game down, it's, a, it's, a, it's an easy game, easy weekend to try to do too much. And I'm sure we're going to have a great crowd, be an electric atmosphere, but not letting that affect the way you play, just being consistent, consistently good at what we do. So I'm looking forward to see how we respond to the, to, to the situation. Maybe with that, with Gage uh, setting the tone as a starting pitcher, what can that do to start start the weekend, essentially, if you pitch as well? well that, that's a Friday night starter, um, you know. To me, a Friday night starter has has some to do with stuff and, and ability to pitch, but has a greater deal with with uh, the character, and the makeup of that guy. He's got, he does set the tone. Um, he's gonna have bad games just like everybody else, and, and and when he does, as a Friday night starter, you got to heat up some innings, man. He can't just kind of blow up your bullpen to, to, to start a weekend. So, um, and he's that guy. No matter what, he's gonna compete to, from the first pitch he throws to the last pitch before we take him out of the game. So. Um, but Friday night starter is just like any start of a game, but this guy started the whole series as you set the tone for the whole weekend. So it's a big role. Awesome. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Coach.